Hello and welcome to this video. So we're going to start looking in this video at applying some single candle patterns to our data. So on the BabyPips uh, site, there's a cheat sheet for candlestick patterns. That's something that a lot of people use, I think, when they're trading. So we can have a look at how to calculate them. We're going to look at this spinning top one, the doji one, these marabozo. And then we have these four sort of hammer in hanging man, inverted hammer and shooting star, which are all essentially the same candle, just at different colors or orientations. If we think about the features that we'll need to identify in the data, we've got most of them already. So the spinning top, we can limit the body size by a certain percentage and also say that it has to be more or less in the middle. A doji, mm. the same thing. We can limit the body size to a very small percentage. The marabozo, a huge body size. And then the hammer has to be within a certain distance of the bottom or top of the candle, so the high or the low, and also has to have a relatively small body. So we've got most of the statistics already applied in our data frame to be able to identify these particular patterns. One thing I would like to do though is inside the plot candles function, I'd like to actually add something onto here, another argument, which we're going to call df markers and set that equal to none. And that's so that we're able to plot the actual candles that we're looking to identify. Now usually we use dots for our markers when we're identifying, but this time we're going to do something a little bit different. We're actually going to use different colored candles. And to do that, we're going to make a little bit of a hack. We're simply going to say that if data frame markers is not none, then we'll plot the candles from our markers data frame. In other words, I'm going to take exactly the same code that we had above for plotting our candles, paste it again here, and then make sure to change the df plot here for df markers, otherwise we'll rub over everything. And I'm also going to change the color to this 3480EB as well, and just execute that cell so that we've got uh, our new function written for plotting the candles and we can identify some of the patterns. I'm just going to run all the rest of the cells and get down to where we were in the previous vid video and we can start thinking about the application of our patterns. So obviously the first thing we're going to need is actually a function for applying our patterns. And in this function, one thing I'm going to do straight away is return the data frame because I forgot in the last video. And then just above this cell, I'm going to take this uh, df is equal to df raw calls copy and actually put that uh, down here. So it's directly done above the apply stats and just uh, remove it from here as well. And this allows us then essentially to start again when we want to apply the patterns and the stats. The other thing I'm going to do then is just apply the patterns as well, and then we're ready to go. So the first thing I'd like to do is declare some constants at the top of this cell where we have our functions. So the first one is what's called a small body. So we're going to use this to limit the identification of the spinning top and the hammer by saying that the body percentage must be less than uh, 0.2. We don't need 0 0.20. And then I mentioned that with the hammer that we need to be within a certain distance of the top of the candle. Well, we'll say that that's going to be 15% of the candle range. The doji body we're going to say has to be less than 5% of the candle range and the uh, marabozo or whatever it's called has to be at least 95%. The body has to be at least 95% of the candle. Now the other slightly tricky one is the uh, spinning top I think it was called. That's where we want to say that we're within a certain bounds of the middle of the candle. So what we'll say is, is that the top of the body has to be uh, within 55 and 45% of the candle range. So that's 10% range around the middle of the candle. And the reason we've written them like this and not hard coding them to the function is just so you can change these and play around with them later on when you, maybe you think the settings we have here aren't correct, which uh, is a good possibility. So then underneath the apply bottom uh, end distance, we can start writing out a new function and we're going to call this one apply hammer. And here we've got some very, very simple logic. So we can simply say that if the rows body percentage just make sure this is tabbed correctly. If the rose body percentage is less than our small body, so remember that's the 0.2, so if we've got less than 20% of the body, the candle range is the body, we maybe have a hammer. We need then to check whether we're at the right distance. We'll type if row.distance top percentage is less than close distance or the row distance bottom percentage is less than close distance, return true, otherwise return false. So that function then will identify a hammer for us. So now I'm just going to copy this dist bottom here because we've got the line with the apply and everything. Just paste that into apply patterns, change the uh, column name to hammer, and then we can get our apply hammer function and just apply that there. Run the cell, run the cell here, and let's have a look what we have on the data frame by typing df.head. So we can see on the right hand side here, the first five candles at least aren't identified as a hammer. 
However, let's check this out uh, a little bit better. So we'll type dfplot is equal to df.iloc, and then let's go from, I don't know, 100 to 160. The other thing we need is our markers data frame to identify the hammer. So we'll say df markers is equal to df plot, df plot dot hammer is equal to true. And now we should be able to plot candles with our df plot and markers. Scrolling down a little bit then, and you can see indeed that at least it looks like we've uh, mostly identified the hanging men pattern here. This one maybe could have been identified here with a slight tweak to the parameters, but uh, it looks okay to me. Let's go on a little bit further and just try uh, 200 to Let's try 250. And of course, now I do that, we don't actually have one. Let's uh, try 300 to 350. And we've got a cut more there, and you can see that we've got this uh, shape that we saw on the cheat sheet. So that's the first one done. So the next one I'd like to do is the spinning top. So to do this, actually, I'm going to take this apply hammer, copy, and just paste the entire function there to try and save a little bit of time and change the name to spinning top. So here we're going to say that if the body percentage again, exactly the same as before, is less than small body. And now we have to change a little bit of the logic here. So we're going to say that if the distance top is less than, and not the close distance, but the center distance high, and then we need to say and, the row distance top percentage, so the top again of the candle is greater than the center distance low, then we know that we have a spinning top here. So we can go back down to our patterns, just copy and paste this, take the spinning top. I don't have much room because I'm zoomed in to do this. Change the column name to spinning top and rerun everything again. And we should now have on the data frame some spinning tops. So we can take the spinning top then and just have a look again at the plot and see if we have anything inside here with a spinning top. And here you can see we've got one here and we've also got one here. You could argue maybe the body's a little bit big here, um, but that's open to you obviously to adjust. Let's just go back to the 100 to let's make it 170 here. And here we can see we've got a couple more of these spinning tops identified. And you can see that the uh, identification is working quite nicely. The only thing for me is maybe the body's a bit big. I don't know. I don't use these patterns in real life anyway. So there's two left then that we need to apply. And one of those is the doji. So we're going to do this using a lambda like we did in the previous video. So I'm going to take that from the direction one here. So now what we're going to say is if the data frame body percentage is less than, and I think we called it the doji body up here, didn't we? Yes, if it's less than the doji body, then it's a doji. So we're going to apply a lambda and saying that x is true. If x is less than the doji body, else false. And that should identify our doji. So we'll run everything again, run the head, and then come down here and just change this doji. And we can see that we're identifying now the candles with a very small body. So last but not least then, and this one is pretty much the same as previously, we can do this Maraboso where we want to see if the body percentage is bigger than the, what did we call it, uh, the full body. So the 95% here. So if it's bigger than this, then we have our Maraboso. So let's do the same process again here. Run everything. Just go down to our markers. Apply the Maraboso. And we don't have anything on this one. So I'll go forward and just go 200 to uh, 270. See if we've got one. And we've got a couple of them on this one here and you can see indeed we seem to be identifying the candles correctly. Let's just change this to 400 here so we've got some more candles and we've got a few more of them there. So one thing we could do here just to finish off then is we could identify more than uh, one type of candle pattern in here. So we'll put the pipe symbol here. This is an or. I can't remember if we've covered it already in the course or not. And then I'm just going to copy and paste this in here. And here we can put, say, let's say, put the hammer in here and then we'll put the doji in as well. So we're saying if we have a maraboso or a hammer or a doji, then we want to see the candles in the plot. And now you can see we've got quite a few more candles identified here all over the place. So that's it then for this video. Um, relatively simple stuff. It's nothing that we haven't seen before, the lambdas we introduced in the last video. And you can see how quickly you can generate uh, and identify the candle patterns from uh, large data sets using Python and pandas. So in the next video, we'll move on to looking at uh, two candle patterns. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, welcome as always on YouTube.